The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and this week is going to be an interesting week because both my co-hosts, both my regular co-hosts, have been either somehow occupied. One is busy filming with her wife. The other one is, well, let's just say we don't want to spend an hour listening to Holly puke. Just not would not That's be a good. That's up to you. I find puke. I find puking sounds very relaxing in a you know <laughs> disturbingly fetishistic kind of way. Oh dear. Uh, but as you guys hear, we do have a guest, and in fact, he is also the first of the uh, new pickups that we've had on RT Gomer Productions that has come onto the show. This is Aaron Mills, a.k.a. Dubious Khan. How you doing, Aaron? I'm doing well, thank you. Sweet. Glad to be part of the site and all that fun stuff. Yes. It, it's great to have you. Uh, I, I, I say... At the end of every audition process, it's always a, a, a tough decision. It's like, oh, there are so many good people, but I don't want to, like, oversaturate the site, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, I think even the site right now, we're comparable to, I think, Nerdvice numbers. We're hitting 40 on both sides. So it's like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But not everybody is also active every day either, so. Right. So, yeah, I mean, oof. But that's okay. So uh, for those who don't know who you are, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? All right. Um, well, I, uh, I've been doing videos for about uh, a little over two years now. I'm coming up on three at the end of this month now that it's March. And um, pretty much uh, I now have, right now, as of last night, approximately five series that I do. Uh, my main series is Into the Idiot Box, which I originally started off with the usual cynical, this television is crap, blah, blah, blah. But as I went along... I realized that what I was doing wasn't entirely negative, which wasn't the kind of show I wanted to do. If you look at my early stuff, it's very, you know, nostalgic critic, angry video game nerd type stuff, just with television. Mm -hmm. And after about my second or third episode, I realized I don't want to do that kind of show. So the focus has changed. The tagline used to be where we look at television of the past and present and try to figure out where things went so horribly, horribly wrong – and then after I watched a few of my back issues, which I do, I do actually go back and watch my older videos to see what I can change, what jokes I can use again, and so on. Um, I realized that that really wasn't what I was doing, and I changed the tagline. So now Into the Idiot Box is a showcase of the best, worst, and weirdest that television has to offer. Because there's a lot of shows that people don't know about that I try to find and uh, talk about those, and then, you know, take on a few other more popular programs and whatnot. Um, The other shows I do, I do another review show, which is a film review show, uh, focusing on mystery films, and I do that one in character. It's called Who Done It Hall, and basically I play Edgeworth, your ubiquitous butler, who has been told by the unseen master of the hall to introduce the Internet to the expansive collection of mystery films that the master owns. So, basically, if it's a mystery film, I'll take a look at it, uh, or more accurately, Edgeworth will take a look at it. Um, I've done films like Nancy Drew, uh, the original, uh, and then there were none from 1945, uh, two of Peter Ustinov's uh, Hercule Poirot movies, and so on and so forth. Um, Third one I started doing was called I Can Explain Everything, where I just had this idea of doing a short little informative series where I just would take a uh, whiteboard and do some illustrations about what I was talking about and then speed it all up so I could do it all in like 10 minutes or less. So basically the idea was people would send me in a concept or a question they want me to explain, and then I would you know do the video on it, and that would be it, and try to keep it under 10 minutes. And so far I have. I think my longest I Can Explain Everything is about six minutes. Um, and there I've covered everything from the origins of Boxing Day to uh, the speculator boom in the comics market to uh, uh, the first episode which I did, which I decided to actually explain what Schrodinger's cat was and the actual origins of the theory, which is not what everybody thinks it is. Um, a little while ago, I started doing a uh, – I wanted to do something that was more – not review, more original – type stuff, and I came up with this idea of doing kind of a visual podcast kind of thing, heavily, anybody who watches it will immediately realize it's heavily inspired by Welcome to Night Vale, but 
I decided to do it a little bit differently, and what it is, it's called Dispatches from the Neurostatic Confederacy, which is more or less a series of news, quote-unquote, uh, articles from a uh, dystopian society, which really does not give a damn about people all that much. Um, it's a typical – it all comes – it takes place in a place called Alpha City, which is an unspecified location. It is the capital of the Confederacy, um, and just – assorted horrible things happen every week and the main character that I play Zach Allred just more or less reads these news stories off in a very you know the way you would any sort of newscast it's just he's very blasé about all these horrible things I mean the most recent episode involved an 11 year old being arrested for cyber terrorism sent for interrogation escaping and basically as a result of that interrogation he has his head shaved an ID number tattooed on his wrist and he's missing his pinky finger on his left hand well then, you know, <laughs> yeah, the, the the Confederacy is not a nice place, and that's what I try to get across in every episode. Right. And then finally, my last series, which I just seriously, literally started last night. I finally got the first video up last night. Um, I decided to start doing a retrospective series because a lot of people do those. I mean, there's obviously history of Power Rangers and uh, other ones like that, but I like doing things where of stuff that is. I think is great quality, but considering that I'm pushing 40 and a good chunk of the people who do this sort of thing are still in their 20s, you know, mid to late 20s to early 30s, uh, there's a lot of stuff that I just feel they don't know about that people should. And so I decided to take one of my favorite film series and talk about it. So I have begun uh, Legacy of the Pink Panther, where it's going to be a 12-part series, uh, which I intend to release monthly, so it'll go for about a year. Uh, covering each of the 11 movies that exist in the Pink Panther franchise and then one episode detailing the cartoon character and the cartoons and all that stuff. So, yeah, I just put up the uh, first one uh, literally last night. It's not, it hasn't even been up for 24 hours yet on the original 1963 Pink Panther. Nice. Yep. Oh, wow. And um, and I do I do want to apologize to, to listeners right now because uh, if – I don't know if it got in the recording, but Skype – you know how Skype will have the uh, advertisements play on like one-on-one -on -one calls or what have you? Yeah. One of the advertisements decided it wanted to get my attention audibly, so oh, it started okay. playing something. I don't know if it got in the recording. I didn't hear anything, so – Okay. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, yeah, I hope not. But uh, just in case there is, I do apologize for it. I, I will try and make sure it's not in the actual finished product. So if you don't hear it, then I guess either A, I did my job, or B, I didn't get in the recording. But it also gives me a chance to say, fuck you, Skype. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just goddamn, dude. I mean, I, okay, you need advertisement revenue to keep your stuff free and going. Okay, fine. I can deal with the advertisements. Just keep them quiet. That's all I ask. We don't need dancing ads. We don't need, you know, ads that automatically start videos. Hello, I'm Bob Evil. I'd like to sell you a left-handed nostril inhaler right here, right now. You know you need a left-handed nostril inhaler. You're on Skype. We'll send you anything that you want and several things that you don't. Observe this monkey rectal thermometer. We'll be happy to send that to you at no charge. It's our gift to you. Uh-huh. Pretty much. Ah, I hate when sites. I hate when sites in general do that. Unless it's like, unless the video is supposed, supposed to be to. the centerpiece of the page you're on, don't have them autoplay. I'm looking at every news site that that seems to come out of. I, I want to say Oklahoma or New Jersey or New York. It'll be all of them. Ah, uh, and this is just local news stuff. Yeah, uh. it's 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 bad everywhere. It's. One of the reasons I stopped hosting my videos on Daily Motion, I got tired of all those video ads they have on any given page. It's like you already have a video going. Why do you have this here? There's no reason for that. <laughs> hey, yeah, this is this is where this these are those times where I would probably use AdBlock if mm -hmm. if they get a little too annoying. I generally don't use it if it's if it's like like on YouTube. I don't use it uh, because right. I know those people. You know, you know everybody on YouTube, myself included, we do get something or we're supposed to <laughs> so i haven't more. yet but who knows yeah. me neither i've gotten more through patreon than i have through youtube or blip so yeah <laughs> oh but yeah so so i do actually have a follow-up story from last week uh last week we talked about the kids in okoye florida that just decided you know we're just gonna storm this theater we're just gonna go storm it the cops were called out they got everybody out of there 
We found out why. Okay. It's because of Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, jeez. They wanted to sneak in and see it for free, or, or, or at least sneak in and just be able to see it. Because, you know, these are kids that are under 18. And so, of course, they want to see something, and, and all I can think of is, guys, there's free porn on the internet. There's plenty of it out there. But it's not branded porn. You don't understand that. Uh, oh, there is plenty of branded porn out there. They're just not the mainstream brands. <laughs> exactly. That's my point. You know? See, here's the thing. I lived for a good for a good chunk of time, for almost 10 years, in that area. Koei, for those who don't know, is not that far is basically on the west side of Orlando. Mm -hmm. So, and really, it's like you can drive you 20 minutes. You drive, you get on Colonial Drive, you drive for 10 minutes, and there you are. You're out of you're out of uh, Orlando and into a Um, yeah, there is yeah, there's porn, and yeah, there's porn online and whatnot. But basically, keep in mind that we're probably talking a bunch of teenagers who. Florida is very weird, especially Central Florida. Once you get outside the Disney bubble, it's either the most freakishly bizarre people you've ever seen. Uh, there are sections of Orlando where, if you are the wrong color, you will be sold for parts. Um, Jesus! <laughs> now that I didn't know. I mean, yeah. I've, I've I've been down there. I've got a lot of family down there. Nobody told me this. Yeah, it's just it's it's very strange. Um, it's like you have rednecks to the far to the far east. You have you know gangbangers to the west. You have, and then you get out into the other ones where it's this bizarre hybrid of ultra Christian conservatives and the most dangerous human beings who ever walked the earth. Oh, and Jesus. I'm thinking probably these are a bunch of suburban kids and whatnot because I remember seeing this is out. And even then, it might just be people who honestly can't afford the internet. To be yeah. quite honest with you, because Akoi is not exactly a financially, a financially, um, it, it, they, they basically fluid, fluid, yeah. fluid uh, community. Uh, the West Oaks Mall. I saw this. I saw this link uh, when you sent me the wrong thing earlier, so I looked yeah. at the story. <laughs> yeah, the West Oaks Mall is you know kind of that mall that nobody wants to go to. <laughs> yeah. It's, oh boy. So yeah. basically, Okoy is is the Poe section, basically. <laughs> eh, kind kind of. It's 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 it fluctuates all over Central Central Florida is just weird because of the Disney bubble and oh, yeah. all that yeah. and the tourist area. The problem is is that economic. A lot of people are like, oh, you live in Florida, that must be nice. And you live in Orlando next to Disney World and all that. That's great. <laughs> uh, no, it isn't. <laughs> oh. And I say this as someone who worked for Disney World for seven and a half years. Oh damn. Um, yeah. What, Don't what, get me wrong. What part of Disney? I'm, I'm actually curious. Um, I started at Epcot for a year. Then I went to Disney Quest, which is at Downtown Disney, for five years. And then I finished my last couple of years um, uh, doing graveyard custodial at the Wilderness Lodge and the Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I, uh, yeah, that, that kind of got me up because it's like I was actually part of the college program back about ten years ago. So I'm like, oh, dear shit. God, we hate, <laughs> we, hate, we hate it all of you. We hate all of you. <laughs> If you're getting on the college program, just be advised, anybody who works full-time at Disney World will hate you because you're basically stealing their job and are part of the reason why they're not getting paid more. Let me point this out to you. At the time, I started in 2004 at Disney World. I was making six seventy an hour. Seven and a half years later, because Disney is, in fact, a union shop, so raises are determined by whatever arguments the union and the, and the, uh, the company managed to work out, which they're both fucking nuts mm -hmm. um by the time i got done seven and a half years later almost a decade i was making a whopping nine dollars an hour and Oof. i only and only that much because i got a dollar more for working graveyard be on the, at the uh the lodge and the Port wilderness resort Jeebus. so I, I, not after 10 almost 10 years yep nine dollars so yep. you said 2004 this is almost 2014 Ouch. 2011 it was about Two thousand eleven. Yeah. Oof. Jeebus. I mean yeah. and I'm sitting here thinking, damn, I made I, I, I made nine dollars an hour starting out at Walmart in Wyoming. That's mm -hmm. pretty bad. Yep. And basically that's why Central Florida is, you know, to use the old cliche, it's a nice place to live that live visit, but you wouldn't want to live there. Um yeah, tell because me <laughs> basically since Disney's the biggest employer in the area, everybody else, all the other employers pay according to that scale. 
Oh no. Yeah. Oh. Most jobs barely are barely more than minimum wage in Orlando. And everybody's too busy kissing mouse booty. Well, it's not even the mouse. It's like it's just basically the way it works. It's not – see, here's the thing. Working for Disney, you do actually realize that, yeah, you know what, the pay sucks, but there are part, perks to the job. And you start to realize that all the Disney bashing that people do, mm-hmm. it actually isn't all entirely justified. Disney is no evil than any other corporation. Right. They're not, really. They're not. Their job is to make money. That's why they're there. It's yeah. just for some reason people expect them to hold to a higher moral ground. Just because for some reason they've decided to focus on family entertainment, hmm. it's like uh, no, they're they're no more evil than anyone else. And anybody who says it's like, well, go to Universal. Well, you know what? Universal's not on union for starters, which yeah. means that if they feel like firing you, they'll just fire you. Right. And uh, they don't pay much more either. I looked into possibly going to Universal when I was having a period where I was extremely disgruntled with Disney, and uh, yeah. I saw their advertising, and they were offering, and I believe this was around 2007, Mm -hmm. for experienced theme park people, people who have been working in a theme park for a while. They were offering $7.50 an hour and no benefits. No benefits? No benefits. I'd be like, bullshit. Disney, I had benefits. I had – I mean the benefits were actually – you had health, you had dental, you had vision. It was pretty decent actually as far as benefits go. Yeah, and of course free access to the parks. Yep, free access to the parks, <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can. They gave us. Uh, this has changed since they uh, implemented a new system, but they used to give us uh, give uh, cast members a uh, what they call a main gate pass, mm-hmm. where initially when I first started, I could get me and up to three people into the parks for free twelve times a year. Oh. They upped that to sixteen after I had been there for about a year. I have I had never I had never used all sixteen in oh, one wow. year. I, because I, when you can go to the parks all the time, after a while, yeah, the shine kind of wears off. Until something yeah. new comes along, you're like, okay, whatever. And it didn't really help with me because nearly all my friends always wanted to go to Epcot because you could drink. Right. Well, I was already working there. So it's uh, like, you want to go to the park? You want to go to the parks this weekend? Or, you know, whenever my days off were usually Tuesday and Wednesday. And they were like, yeah, let's go to Epcot. I'm like, really? Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was. I was always kind of weird because I worked in uh, Tomorrowland in the Magic Kingdom. I mm-hmm. worked I worked the Speedway actually, <laughs> and and almost every time I'd get off of work, I'd go down, I'd switch out of my costume, and then I'd go back up in Tomorrowland and just ride that uh, t- the TTA thing or whatever around. TTA. Yeah. Uh, not the TTC. Sorry. No, you're right. The TTA was what it was. The TTC. Ticket and Transportation Center. Transportation Center, which is where you get on the monorail and crap, for those who don't under- who don't understand Disney abbreviations and lingo. Yeah. I so. actually recently discovered they actually changed some of the codes now. Oh, it really? apparently is no longer a protein spill. It is a code V now, apparently. A code V? Holy shit. <laughs> too many... <laughs> of course, it didn't take long for... Um, you know, I mean, I guess, I guess everybody figured out what protein spill is now, and they tried changing it, but of course, thanks to all the Disney fan sites these days. Yeah. Oh, and for the record, anybody who's looking for information on what's happening at, at, at Disney, if you know anyone who actually works for the company, go ahead and ask them. Jim Hill Media doesn't know shit about fuck. <laughs> He's been saying for years that Disney Quest is going to close down. Disney Quest is still open. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. Oh, snap. I better, I better get down there because Disney for me is like about a four or five hour drive. I, right. I, I I should go down there sometime and just go and have fun at Disney Quest because it – oh, God. I loved it when I was there. All the arcade games, all the other little games that you could play, we weren't, we weren't able to get in because, well, you know, you, we still had to pay to get in. It's not one yeah. of the big major parks, but whenever but we But the thing is, in, is once you pay – the thing is that nobody realizes is once you pay, once you're in, all you got to pay for is food. Everything else is included. Yeah. All the video games, all the virtual reality stuff. They actually shut down Ride the Comics from what oh. I understand because I still have friends who work there. They finally shut that down, which is fine because it's a horribly it was a horribly dated attraction and one of the worst ones we had, and it was almost impossible to win. Oh, so, wow. yeah. Ooh. For those who don't know, um, there are two quote unquote virtual reality attractions where virtual reality means circa 1998. Um, Aladdin's Magic Carpet Ride, which is okay, it's fine, it's fun. You zoop around on a magic carpet, collect gems, beat monsters, and all that jazz. And if you can get to the end before the timer expires, you win. Easy. 
Uh, Ride the Comics was meant to be an immersive comic book type experience where you'd fight bad guys and all that, which was all well and good, but the last thing, it was just so clunky and everything else. And we're, this is not light virtual reality equipment. You're essentially uh, strapping two small televisions to your face. Oh, wow. Trying to do that, trying to use it um, with this kind of virtual sword type thing that you held and had two buttons and all that. I um, I, I quickly became like the master at teaching people how to use it because they would just flay the idea is to just swing it back and forth in front of you to the left and right and wide arcs to do damage and that was fine but most people would just hold it and wave it back and forth or worse try to swing it up and down um i had to help someone who uh was having problems a smaller kid and his uh, headset slipped and i was trying to get his headset adjusted while he was playing and he whapped up and hit me right in the teeth with one of them ouch with one of those sword handles, and it was just like that. Worked, I worked that into my safety lecture from there on out. I just basically said, if you know, if you swing it back, you want to use wide strokes. If you if you do little, if you just jab at them or swing it back and forth in a small arc, it just makes them mad. And if you swing it up and down, you're going to hit them, hit yourself in the face. <laughs> I do not mean in the game. I mean you will actually hit yourself in the face. <laughs> yeah. I've taken one of these to the teeth. It hurts. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I mean. And that, you know, I wish I'd been able to, like, go around to, like, different things because, like I said, I worked at the Tomorrowland Indie Speedway, and the most we had happen, the most that we've have had happen to me was, like, a car would, you know, kind of stop in the middle of the thing and back everything up so one of us would have to go get it. I've actually been hit by one of those things. That hurts. Ow. Yeah. It's not as bone-crunching as you would think because they don't go very, very fast, but it's fast enough to knock me off of my feet and mm -hmm. on my ass. Ah. <laughs> oh. And then you're trying so hard not to swear right in the middle. Of... Yeah. Because, oh. you know, it, the thing is, is that when you work for Disney and you're actually in the parks, that whole onstage backstage thing gets drilled into your head and you just start doing it automatically. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then especially in the Magic Kingdom, you feel like if you swear in the Magic Kingdom, like Walt himself is going to come down and strike you with lightning or something. <laughs> I'm sorry, Walt. Don't hit me. You know what? It was an accident. You know, it was easier for me because at that point I was not much into curse. I wasn't much of a cursor anyway, so right. that was no problem for me. Now I've got the mouth of a goddamn fucking sailor. I want to go in the Magic Kingdom and test this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh, we, we've kind of went on and on and on about Disney and everything. Holy shit. <laughs> well, let's move on to something else then. We're yes, yes, we, we should. Boring everybody on that. Yeah. But in short, so in conclusion, no, Disney not evil any more than any other corporation is evil. So right. there. Yeah, but uh, but before we actually hit the news news stories, um, like I said, we did the follow up, um, and this week there was a bit of sad news. This week kind of saddened it up a bit. It's gonna be mood whiplash because um, right after that we're gonna go into good news, but but right now we have do have some sad news. Uh, this week Leonard Nimoy, we all know Mr. Spock, uh, he died this week at 83. Uh, according to what I've read, the cause of death was uh, end stage end stage chronic obstru obstructive pulmonary disease. I think I can read. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I've never been much of a Star Trek fan myself. In fact, I've never really watched any of them. I've been meaning to, but I've never gotten around to it. But you know, I, I understand and I see the impact this man had in. Yeah, just everybody, every, you know, just in life in general, in in society, and it's like, you know, yeah, I, I you know, I, I, my heart goes out to his family and his fans and friends and everybody. He's just, what, well, what else can I say? I guess. Yeah, um, he was a great actor and a great man and all that. Um, I personally am kind of this in the same boat you are. I don't really get all broken up when a celebrity dies. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I'm sad that he's died. I'm sorry for his family. But, you know, the guy was 83 for starters. I mean, we we're pretty much expecting it at this point. But – and I hate sounding like a callous bastard about that. But, um, yeah, um, it's, yeah, it was one of those things. I mean, yeah, he's a major geek icon and all that. But I have never – also never been a huge Star Trek fan. Um, my son, interestingly, is, and he's he's 16. And uh, he is not—he is not a Next Generation Voyager DS9 fan. No, he is original classic Trek. He has the whole first season on DVD. He has all the movies, and he likes those very much. Nice. Um, yeah. But uh, for those who really want to see, hear Leonard Nimoy at his best as Spock, um, he and John Delancey and a couple of other people 
a few years ago formed a company called Alien Voices where they were doing audio productions of like classic science fiction stories and whatnot. Well, they did a couple of live shows, which pretty much summed it up in the title, Spock versus Q. Uh-oh. And um, if you haven't heard these, they are brilliant. They were put out on CD. There's Spock versus Q, and there's Spock versus Q, the sequel. Um, and they're live shows, so you hear people laughing and carrying on, and it's just funny because they're staying perfectly in character. You know, Q is trying to get under Spock's skin and failing miserably in the first one. And, uh, you know, it's kind of funny. And then, But what's great is in the sequel, uh, something happens to them. They end up on an asteroid, and their personalities are reversed. Oh, dear. Yeah. So <laughs> you have this thing where, you know, they discover they've more or less switched bodies, you know, but the personalities have stayed with the body. So Q is very calm and logical and Spock well let me put it this way there's a point where um Q tries to contact the continuum and nobody recognizes his voice so he hands it over to Spock and he's talking to one of them her names like Mabel or something like that and you just hear Spock this hey baby what's happening oh no (laughs) (laughs) oh man it's hilarious it is one of the funny Spock versus Q and Spock versus Q the sequel are some of the most hilarious things you'll ever hear. If you can find a copy somewhere, do it. I know that um, Nash actually posted a YouTube link to the original Spock versus Q, but and that one's fun. But the sequel is where it really gets fun with them playing each other, and it's just like, and especially just with John Delancey as Q when he's talking talking to the Q can do I what. No, I don't sound different. I am the same bon vivant I have always been. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So, yeah, that, that'll that be something we can look up. Uh, Spock versus Q, you said? Or yes. Was, yeah. Yeah. Spock versus Q and Spock versus Q, the sequel. Yes. Stuff to look up on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll actually count that end sh- for our shout outs for this week as well because I actually forgot mine. Uh, but, <laughs> but this could be a thing. Uh, I'll try and have the uh, video links to them in the description when I actually put the show up, so hopefully. Yay. Uh, But uh, now we hit our actual news. Oh, the first one, good news, very good news. Everybody's heard it. I'm pretty sure they have. The FCC voted 3-2 Thursday in favor of net neutrality. That's right. The open Internet shall remain just that, open. Before the vote, FCC Chairman Tom Wheeler released a statement to Wired saying, I am submitting to my colleagues the strongest open Internet protections ever proposed by the FCC. These enforceable, bright-line rules will ban paid prioritization and the blocking and throttling of lawful content and services. I propose to fully apply, for the first time ever, those bright-line rules to mobile broadband. My proposal assures the rights of Internet users to go where they want, when they want, and the rights of innovators to introduce new products without asking anyone's permission. To which I say, yes. Yeah. Because based on that alone, it's like, okay, you know, you you can go and like, like say I go, oh, let's say, let's say I go up to Louisville or something. Uh, this is the first place I came to that came to my head and I can get just as good internet access well based on you know whoever the provider is depending on like their the 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 customer's maximum connection speed or what have you because I think they have tiered connection speeds or whatever depending on how much you pay I don't know but yeah but the point is the point is I can get just as good internet connection as I do here with with my home connection right so so and that should be it, you know. It shouldn't be like, oh wait, you you're initially an AT and T customer. You're trying to access your shit through a Verizon connection. No, we're gonna throttle that because you're supposed to be with us. That can't happen. That uh, well, here's the this thing. Guy, here's, should not happen. Here's yes. the dirty little secret that um, a lot of people don't realize, which I learned uh, shortly after I moved back to Utah and got a job working customer service for Verizon. Oh dear. Uh huh. Uh, I lasted – I this should tell you how long. I lasted through a month of training and four days on the floor before I realized just how much that customer service is not a priority for them. Oh, and dear, I just oh, got dear. frustrated and annoyed with everybody. If, in case you're wondering, yeah, they'll give you a month of training, give you all the tools you need in training, and the second you're out on the floor, oh, yeah, look at that. All those tools we told you about, you don't get them now. What the fuck? Yeah. It's like the training department and the people on the floor don't talk to each other. It's amazing. 
Oh yeah, and your supervisor complete and completely useless. They'll they'll just be like, no, you've got to deal with it. You've got an angry customer. You've got to deal with it. I'm sorry. If they ask for a supervisor, you have to tell them that you're just as good as a supervisor. And it's just like, <sighs> like I said, I lasted about three weeks. And oh yeah, and their attendance policy was ridiculous. They were like, our 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 uh, our our queue lines are determined by the number of people we have on staff. So you need to be here. And if you're sick, you need to make up that time. So if you're sick for a day, you need to go through the rest of the – if you're sick for one day out of the week, you need to stay two hours every day extra to make up for those hours that you missed. What the hell? Yeah, that. but that's standard call center procedure. Every call center operates on that mentality, to which I say – and I, to which I say, and I should have said this to – I really wish I had said this to the person the one time I did have to call in sick – was, really? Then by that logic, you must have been lo- miss- losing millions of dollars before you even hired me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, but getting to my point, they f- showed everybody that pretty much all the wireless carriers, they all more or less use the exact same network. They all lease towers from each other. Mm-hmm. So, Yeah. So every time somebody says, we have the biggest network, well, the only one that actually is true is for Verizon because they own about 60% of the towers in the country. Right. But T-Mobile, AT&T, they're all renting those towers from Verizon on top hmm. of everything else. So. Hmm. Now yeah, this is something, something I did not know. Yeah, pretty much that's how it works. I mean, aside from some really – um, and aside from some uh, some really you know rural areas like mostly in Wyoming, parts of Idaho, parts of northern Utah and whatnot – where there's absolutely zero coverage whatsoever, um, yeah, it's all it's all more or less you know just one big set of towers, and they just lease. It depends on who owns the tower, and they lease from each other. So, huh. well then, but, just yeah. in case you thought cell phones were, just in case you need any information about cell phones being an even bigger scam than they actually are. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, yeah. Uh, according to The Verge, Internet service providers, Internet services will now be regulated. They they forgot to put the B in there, but I added it in because I am just that much of a grammar Nazi at times. <clears throat> um, will now be regulated under Title II of the Communications Act. This means that Internet access will be classified as a utility in the same manner phone lines are. Finally. The rules make it impossible for Internet service providers to throttle Internet connections to certain sites or apps that don't pay up. Uh, wait, wait, which, which company was it that pretty much, uh, extorted net, I, I'm calling it extorted, extortion on the part of Netflix to, to... Uh, that was Comcast, actually. That was Comcast, yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking, I was, I just wanted to be like, absolutely If there's sure. evil bullshit happening with the internet, nine times out of ten, it's fucking Comcast. Yeah, and, oh god, my girlfriend and one of my co-hosts have Comcast, oh shit. <laughs> oh. I don't have a choice, out here, that's all you get, it's Comcast or nothing. Oh, uh, ouch. Yep. Yeah. Uh, your cable comes from Comcast. Your internet, for the most part, comes from Comcast. There's a couple of other ones in there, but you're kind of, you yeah. We have a couple of other companies. we got a we got CenturyLink out here, but they keep wanting to tie that to you getting, like, you know, direct TV or something. And it's like, I don't want that. I just want the friggin' internet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the new rules also lump wireless ISPs and broadband ISPs together. The internet connection a person receives from Verizon will be held to the same rules as the internet a person gets from their home network from Comcast. Which but, means it'll be shit either way, but still. Yeah. Hey, at least <laughs> at least it's equal shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Another way this act is substantial is how it will end wireless service carriers' ability to prioritize services such as streaming music or video services. For example, Spotify will be able to run just as smoothly on any car- carrier, regardless of whether they had a business arrangement for special treatment. The FCC re- received an unprecedented number of comments from the public regarding net neutrality. Over 4 million people commented on the topic, and Wheeler noted the level of public engagement, saying, It should not be surprising that public engaged, that the public engaged like never before, because the stakes of the debate before the commission have never been higher. Broadband networks are the most powerful and pervasive connectivity in history. Broadband is reshaping our economy and recasting the patterns of our lives. Every day, we rely on high-speed connectivity to do our jobs, hello, access entertainment, hello again, and keep up with the news, express our views, and stay in touch with friends and family. I think everybody can say hello at this point. Mm -hmm. 
This is a major victory for all those who are in favor of net neutrality. Laws and rules are not set in stone, however. ISPs are surely mounting an army of lawyers to challenge the new rules in the courts. What happens then is yet to be determined. For now, though, the internet is protected from the tyrannical toll roads major ISPs would love to implement. Because and, there are, and there are still people who are screaming that this is a bad thing. How the hell is that a bad thing? The government's interfering with our lives. Ah, to those people, they've okay. been taking over the internet. Okay, okay. To these people, I want to say, what is going to happen if there is no gov government oversight at all, ever? It's okay, capitalism. It's American. Well, guess what? If, if, if you want just capitalism to run free, well, capitalism means that I could charge you an arm and a leg, or even two arms and two legs. I can charge you your whole goddamn body just to sell you a, a fucking piece of plastic, you know? And and you have you would have to pay for it if you really need that piece of plastic. What the government does is keep, you know, capitalists from going too far out of fucking control and scalping everybody. That's not freedom, that's tyranny and socialism and other terms I don't understand. Well, <laughs> well, you know what? It's better than you being being tossed into the poorhouse just because you need to get some food. It should not, you know, that's what the government is trying to prevent, or at yeah. least most of it. Mm -hmm. But that's more or less all the arguments in a nutshell. Yeah. It dresses it up in prettier words. There are certain people who have said, this will stifle innovation. <laughs> stifle innovation. Stifle yeah, innovation, good... right. Uh, right. Yeah, two words, Pirate Bay. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah just a little bit there. Uh, so, yes, as far, as far as right now, net neutrality is still good and safe. I heard that – okay, this is a funny thing that happened because I saw a news link that said Comcast was getting ready to sue over this. And, yeah. and and of course I I'm, I get a little I got pissed I went over to Tumblr tried to you know post it and everything with the with the because I wanted to post an appropriate uh, picture reaction which is basically George Carlin flipping the bird saying go fuck yourself yeah. um, so I and as I was doing that and right as I posted I noticed that the headline had changed I'm like wait what same link headline changed. And apparently what had happened was somebody at Comcast was like oh I'm gonna go sue these motherfuckers and then apparently somebody talked them down. So Comcast, as far as we know, as of this show, is not going to be one of those ISPs, you know, bringing a lawsuit or suing over it right yeah, now. Yeah, because somebody might have actually shown some common sense. Hey, guys, you know how we keep coming in last in the customer service? Yeah. And I don't think we're going to get a lot of sympathy from anybody. <sighs> no. <laughs> uh, we need more savvy people. Mm -hmm. Wish we did, but it's not going to happen, at least not until the current generation dies off. Sorry. Yeah. I know there's plenty of people who are older than I am who are more savvy with the Internet. There's plenty of people my same age. There are plenty of people who are younger than I am who are savvy with the Internet than I am. But even still, the people in charge right now are people who just don't get it. And they keep thinking they keep thinking that they can just, if they deny it long enough, it won't happen. But, you know, times change. And the times, they are changing rapidly. Oh, yes. Uh, but one thing that doesn't change is bad parenting, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. Take a shot. We're going to Florida. Uh -huh. uh, Welcome back. Yes. A Florida mom's alleged attempt to shame her child into earning better grades in school led her to her own shameful arrest for child abuse. Melanie Joyce Alexander, 30, is, is accused of beating her middle school daughter with a metal-studded belt before sending her to school with a T-shirt flaunting the child's failing grades. The handwritten T shamed the child for earning F's in all of her classes and further warned her friends and any prospective boyfriends to back off before I get another good whoopin' like I got last night. My days of eating french fries and being a social butterfly is over because I know why my parents send me to school. It reads yeah, black because, ink. Yeah, because eating french fries is a well-known contributor to failing your classes. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean... <laughs> and, and you know, you get those people with tater tots. Oh, it's tater tots, and the next thing you know, you're shooting up heroin in a back alley. <laughs> oh, man, let me tell you. The, the days where, where I had to do to fi actually find an alley, because I'm in a small-ass town, to, to find, to actually shoot up heroin after eating about ten or so tater tots. You know, oh, yeah. You know, let me tell you about that. Uh, but and if you get those curly fries, oh, fuck it, you're just done. You're done. <laughs> yeah, which, by the way, I, I, I do want to go back. I, I mentioned before I'm, I can be kind of a grammar Nazi a bit, and, and I know some people are going to be like, oh, don't say that. It's like, well, it's 
best I can, this best descriptor I can come up with right now. Um, but uh, if my days of eating French fries, and, and, and in fact, it's 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 just got days in parentheses, by the way. My days eating French fries and being a social butterfly is over. Yeah. No, my days are over. Yeah. Yeah. Just just ugh. again. It's uh, Florida. Yeah. Like yeah. I said, outside of the Disney bubble, it's things fun. get weird. There's only two places in Florida where you can be fairly certain that you won't be utterly destroyed, and that would be inside the Disney bubble in Orlando, or if you're lucky enough, the down in the Keys. There you go. Problem yeah. is, to get through the Keys, you have to go to Miami. And a little trivia, kids. Miami is an ancient Seminole word meaning that place. <laughs> As in, oh, that place. Oh, dear. Yeah. Apparently, Miami has been a source of weirdness long before long before we came over here and took the whole country over. <laughs> oh, dear. I know this. One of my best friends is a member of the Seminole Tribe of Florida. She informed me of this fact. So yeah. it's not just the city. It's the actual location. <laughs> wow. Just, hmm. uh, yeah, and even, even the panhandle is not free of bug nuttery. As mm-hmm. has been determined and 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 and, and uh, demonstrated over and over and over again over the years. Yep. Uh, anyway. So yes. Uh, so unless you are helping me with this goal, back off. The T-shirt warns apparently to fellow students. A deputy responded to West Hernando Middle School north of Tampa last Friday out of concern over the child's attire. You know, because not only is it shaming, it's shaming that isn't even written well. Well, it's also the fact that it said right there, back off before I get another good whooping like I got last night. Oh, really? Let's just advertise what you're doing to your child. By yeah, practice. just Well no. done. Just just no. I mean, up here, if you wear something like that, they, they, they're probably going to be, you know, a little more lenient because they still believe in corporal punishment around here. But but down there, this is down near Tampa? Uh-uh. That, uh, that, that no, does no, not no. Fly. I lived in Tampa for a year when I first moved to Florida. Tampa's a little less, you know, Tampa's the point where everything starts shifting toward the more liberal end of the spectrum down there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, when the deputy arrived and a social worker examined her body, she was also found with clear impressions from where she was hit with a belt, according to the arrest affidavit. Punishment was determined to be excessive by the DCF, leading to Alexander's arrest. Uh, that was very excessive. Beating your child with a metal-studded belt, very excessive. Yeah, just don't very do Very excessive. It's also called fucking horrible! <laughs> it is! It's like, it's like I, I do not, I'm not the biggest, I am not really an advocate for spanking or anything, you know, or corporal punishment in, in any sort. Well, I grew up in one of those households. So uh, did I. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, and um, yeah, it's not great, and I kind of vowed that I wasn't going to do it, but when I became a parent, and I haven't, that's yeah. one of those things, so. Yeah. But yeah, yeah the... the even then, even if I was, it's like, uh, no, the second you're using an actual fucking weapon, it, that you're go- you've gone beyond discipline. That's just assault in general. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, we got the belt when growing up. Uh, the kids, they they do get it around here. They get like a paddle, you know, and it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's not like huge paddle or anything. It's 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 yeah. like, it's like, uh, like oh god, what is it? Not ping pong, but um. Oh God! With the ball and the string, I can't remember what it, the name of it is, but you know that 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 kind of paddle, not with the mm-hmm. not with the ball on it, of course, but you know, one yeah. of those things. So it's it's not too much. I still don't like it, but you know. Whatever. Yeah, but I don't know. That's just see, I don't know. That's just see. My my dad, my dad may have screamed and yelled and everything. My dad didn't believe in spanking. He just you know, good swift kick in the ass. That was how he did things. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, never any. I don't know. It just doesn't sit well with me personally when it comes to that. There's a thing of discipline. It's like, you know, for some kids, yeah, some kids either need a good swat in the ass or a kick in the ass or what, yeah, whatever to get the point across. But, you know, um, I, I've never been an advocate for using something. I think maybe at most I would say, okay, you can probably get away with using a hairbrush, but yeah, nothing, nothing more than that, you know? Yeah. Uh, and and for me, it would have to be one of those. I, I want to say like extreme cases, like where, you know, like I think like you were saying, you know, nothing else would work. You know, mm-hmm. you do everything else, nothing else is working. There you go. I mean, pretty much when it came to my son, um, I'm divorced. For those who 
wonder. He lives with his mother for the most part, but she keep. But it was an amicable divorce, and she's kept me informed on what he's been doing, especially now that he's an actual teenager and going through the usual, you know, the point where you know, you know how it is. You're 16. You're you're kind of a self-absorbed dick. That's just yeah. part of being a teenager. But he's been kind of mouthing off and failing his grades and all that. And recently we had to uh, – he got in trouble and he was grounded for a week. And I went and got him on my weekend and talked to his mother about it. And we decided, okay, he's been grounded for a week. He's not grounded anymore. And I just took the initiative and told him and said, look, the next time this happens, uh, anything like this happens, uh, you're going to be grounded for a month. And I will make sure that during that month that your life sucks. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. If it happens, I'm not going to hit him. I'm just going to take away anything that might make him that might make him realize life is worth living. You know, oh, video dear. games, movies, yeah, all that. Make him do all the shit work that I normally wouldn't make him do. Right, so. Right. <laughs> so yeah, that. That's... Here, do it. Come over here. You're washing these dishes by hand. Yes, I know I have a dishwasher. Forget it. You're washing them by hand. Yeah. <laughs> you know, stuff uh, like that. Uh, but yeah, so. We have we have another uh, another school news story. Okay. Uh, out of Saginaw, and apparently I'm echoing too. Uh, but uh, parents and a well-regarded edu- parents and a well-regarded educator at Comanche Springs Elementary School are speaking out against Eagle Mal- Mountain Saginaw an Independent School District after Courtney Glazer was placed on leave in late January. The leave came after Glazer, the school's assistant principal, said she started bleeding heavily at district at a district training session. The 31-year-old soon ended up in a local emergency room where doctors determined that an intrauterine device, or IUD, had lodged in her uterine wall. It was painful, and we have documentation to back it all up, she says. The birth control no, no, device... Documentation and this video of me screaming like a banshee. Yeah. Birth control... De- the birth control if that device... came off as sexist, I apologize. I, I just realized that the second I said that. But yeah, well, I I can imagine there would be a little bit of pain in there, and that you yeah, I, I would imagine there would be some kind of scream in there. Mm-hmm. Ah, if if it was me, I probably would be. Of all the time, of all the times to not have a woman on the show. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Ah, oh, yeah. Uh. But uh, they, they got the IUD out, and she fully expected to return to work. But what Glazer heard next from the district came as a shock. They didn't believe me, she said. They thought I had an anxiety attack. Because that's how anxiety attacks work. You just bleed profusely. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, 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 my, my girlfriend, she, she does suffer from anxiety. She has not once mentioned that she had unusual flows from her, from her vagina. You know, anxiety happens. There's usually no mention of blood. Yeah, not usually. No. No. And even if there was, documentation shows it's the fucking IUD that caused it. Yep. So it, it's it's not anxiety. Even if she was having one, that it's just no. <sighs> I I don't get this. I'm looking at the rest of the story and I'm like, what the hell? Okay. Yeah, it's just what? Ah. Uh. I mean, it's like guys thinking that you can just swallow a camera and it'll go right to your uterus. <laughs> <laughs> Topical. Yeah. Well, that's that's the name of the show. <laughs> oh, but yeah, it's like, and and she admits she does have some anxiety. She gets nervous, but it isn't impacting her job. She's led, she, you know, she's led trainings for the district, parent groups, and spoken at PTA meetings. All of which can give somebody with severe stage fright, you know, a, a, a good health, well, not so healthy dose of anxiety. Yeah, but she says it isn't. It? She's done all that, so yeah. it's like, all right, geez. Yeah. Anyway, it's yeah. just one of it's. That's like the dumbest thing. I love this. I love this right here in this story. A letter sent to Glazier by the district cites severe anxiety is the reason behind a series of female bleeding incidents. It also a series of female bleeding incidents. It's the worst young adult novel series ever made. Oh, um, God. Oh. He snickets a series of female bleeding incidents. Anyway, yeah. uh, it also states that Glazer, quote, cannot speak in public to groups, unquote, and that she must visit two doctors and sign a waiver for possible release of her medical records. Even though... I ask, why? Uh, it's like, why? okay, why? What the? Is it? Is this just? Is there like some ninety-year-old? Is this like a bunch of ninety-year-old men on this school board who are like, 
We can't have women bleeding all over the show, all over the place. Uh, it's like God, I don't God, understand God. this. I really don't. And it doesn't help that there's really not a lot of information in this story. It just it's like two completely separate ideas that make no sense. It's like she's bleeding, so she has anxiety, and she can't talk in large groups, and and she needs to have a waiver and two doctors' permission to release her medical records. Even though why well, would she need to? I know. As far as I know, she. I think you know she would have had to say, "Hey, here's the things," so the school already would have it because you you have to have some kind of, you know, documentation showing. Yeah, this is what happened. This is why I couldn't come to work this day, or why I had to leave this day. This is why. So I would think they would already have it. There's some political shit going on here. Yeah. I'm willing to bet there's somebody on the school board that wants her out. Yeah, and and they're drumming this up as as an excuse. Yeah. Oh, lordy. So I'm actually going to skip down a little bit because okay. we, are, we are running a little a little short on time. Yeah, All well, right. Well, we 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 kind of um 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 oh god I can't even think of the thing I we motor mouthed our way through half the show, <laughs> which <laughs> which happens you know uh, that's fine. All right. So this one's out of Denver. Okay. A ban on powdered alcohol is up for another test in the Colorado Legislature Tuesday. The proposal would ban the product known as palcohol until the state implements a regulatory system for it. The House approved the ban earlier this month, and the Senate Judiciary Committee takes it up Tuesday. Supporters of the ban say powdered alcohol would make it easier to sneak alcohol into school and schools and public events. Palcohol is awaiting federal approval to be sold. Product makers say the goal is convenience. They tout the potential uses on flights, after long, after long hikes, and as an antiseptic in remote locations. And five states have already banned palcohol. And I like that they they easier to sneak into schools and public events, as if people true. don't all. Well, yeah, that is true. As if you know people don't already do it. Yeah. And people still get in trouble for it. I mean, it's mm -hmm. like you don't need to implement a new regulatory system for it. It's powdered alcohol. Key term: alcohol. Treat mm -hmm. it just like your other alcohol. Don't yeah. sell it to anybody under 21. Don't you know? Make it illegal for for kids to be in possession of it, or or what have you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just toss it in there under alcohol. Don't don't put it in a place where kids could get it. Well, this goes back to what we talked about earlier with net neutrality. It's mm -hmm. like I said, the times they are a changing, and they are a changing rapidly. Yeah. You know, and people are panicking because they don't know how to cope with it. When you know, taking five minutes to just actively use a little common sense. Yeah. Would. Yeah solve the problem without a lot of drama but that doesn't make for good headlines apparently no it does not because the, oh no it's new we 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 have to ban it no you don't no mm -hmm. in five states it didn't say here the five states that were banned i don't think florida's one of them uh, well, well of course florida wouldn't be one of them because how would we how would we keep our crazy you know and i don't yeah. and i'm not sure alabama's one of them either i could be wrong uh because again it's the south <laughs> Uh, speaking of the South, uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> Tennessee's House Majority Floor Leader kicked off a scandal back home by calling for the creation of a Council of Christian Relations and a NAAWP in this country. But after the face Facebook post came to light, Representative Sheila Butt, one of the most unfortunate names ever, yes, <laughs> said that her critics had it all wrong. W doesn't stand for white. It stands for Western. That's sure not does. much better. No. <sighs> Why people who live in the Western Hemisphere, which includes everyone living in the United States, would need a special interest group wasn't addressed by but. And you know we have a whole you know continent to the south and the sec and the third lar and the second largest country in the world to the north. Yeah. Maybe they'd like to chime in on this. Just a little bit. Hey, Canada, what do you say? Oh. Her comment came in response to an open letter from the Council on American-Islamic Relations, the largest Muslim civil liberties organization in the U.S., urging 2016 GOP candidates to engage Muslim voters and reject Islamophobia. There's why she called for it, right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because anything that is not Christian and white coming to the forefront, help, help, we're being oppressed. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. oh. 
But it gets even better. I love this. But later deleted her comment and replaced it with, quote, We need groups that will stand for Christians and our Western culture. We don't have groups dedicated to speaking on our behalf. There's a reason why. You don't need one. You want a group dedicated to speaking on behalf of Christians and Western culture? It's called the GOP. Or it's called, or it's called uh, the KKK. Or it's called, you know, Congress. Yeah. Oh, many criticize Butt for using the acronym NAAWP, which various white supremacy groups have used in the past to mean the National Association for the Advancement of White People. Former Ku Klux Klan leader David Duke founded an organization with that name. She did not do her history very well. It's it's like it's like Krispy Kreme accidentally doing the KKK thing. Yeah. Except she should know better. Uh huh. She really should, because you are in you are in the government. You are a part of the government system. You mm -hmm. you are what uh, a representative. A represent. Oh, but hang on, wait a minute. We, I we should clarify mm -hmm. that representative butt and will that never not be fun to say? Um, <laughs> representative butt is a House Majority Leader in the Tennessee State House. She does not operate on the federal level. In the interest of complete accuracy, right. we should put that. We should point that out. This is on the. State level, not the federal. <laughs> yes, but she is still a fucking idiot. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> oh. But he is, owes no bounds. Yeah, but uh, but even at the state level, you should know like your country's history to begin with. That's mm -hmm. what they teach you in school, or at least what they're supposed to teach you in school. If if certain Republicans get their way, they're not going to get the full story because it. Because they want Amer they want our kids to think America is the best and 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 no nothing is nothing is uh, um, ever a lot bad. of the more outspoken members of the GOP want the world to look like a fucking Leave It to Beaver rerun. Yeah, and sorry, we're not doing the that. huge yeah. lie about how life was back in the fifties. Yeah. <laughs> oh lordy. Anyway, but yeah, <laughs> but basically, butt's an idiot. And and thankfully she is only you know people in Tennessee you know I I encourage you go and and just bitch her out seriously just go say hey look you you said this fucked up thing you don't know your fucking history because because if you had known your fucking history you would know groups like that are normally called the KKK mm -hmm. you you would know that but apparently you don't so um, I I still encourage people in Tennessee vote her out. Because you, know, you, should, <laughs> you should know your history if you're going to no, be it, vote her out for vote her out if you think she's a racist, but also vote her out because she's an idiot. Listen to what she said about this. This that quote that was an acronym that at that morning I simply made up to say National Association for the Advancement of Western Peoples. I had no idea that had ever been used for that before, so that's something that just came out of nowhere, actually. Uh huh. And not not only that, you know, I I, I would choose to believe that. You know, she was just that ignorant because holy shit, that alone would be a lot of backpedaling motherfuckery going on there. <laughs> backpedaling motherfuckery. <laughs> yes, backpedaling motherfuckery <laughs> because holy <laughs> shit, it's like that's like a, that's that's like that's like the greatest band name ever. Now taking the stage, backpedaling motherfuckery, <laughs> opening for Slayer. <laughs> yes, that needs to happen. Backpedaling motherfuckery needs to be a band. Oh, uh, we need it. We need that to happen. But but in all seriousness, I mean, you know, when whenever somebody like doubles down on what they say and they stick to their guns, I can at least appreciate the fact that they're sticking by their convictions, whether whether they're you know, whether they're good or bad. This woman, she's like, oh, I put this out there, and suddenly she's caught and she's getting all all of this heat, and it's like, oh no no no, I didn't mean that, didn't mean it, didn't mean it, didn't mean it. And it's like, uh huh, sure. Yeah. But wait, uh oh, there's more. There is more. Okay. If you'll excuse me for running all over here. Here we go. Uh, da, 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 da. State House Black Caucus on Thursday called on Butt to apologize and say she should be removed as majority floor leader, the Tennessean reported. Mm -hmm. House Speaker Beth Harwell said she would not remove Butt from her position. Quote, <laughs> I think Sheila's intentions were good, and I think she was misunderstood. Unquote, Harwell said, apparently reading from a Dr. Seuss book. Um <laughs> Remove okay, butt from her that's, seat. Okay, that's – that one – all right, it's like, okay, that's someone who, yeah, she's the House Speaker. She's kind of got to tread a thin line. All right, that's typical politician weaseling out of the – weaseling out of having to make a statement. But it – but now you're going to love this. Mm -hmm. 
Glenn Casada, chairman of the state House Republican Content Caucus, also came to Bud's defense. He released a statement Thursday saying, "Care C A I R." It's uh, some uh, act- I don't think I have. I don't think uh, the Council on American Islamic Relations. That's what Care is. Yep. Um, said it should focus its attention elsewhere. Quote. Instead of using their energy attacking conservatives in Tennessee, CARE should refocus their efforts on starting, stopping the spread of radical extremists in their own religion in the United States and across the world. I call on my colleagues in the General Assembly to join me defending Western values and cultures against radical Islam. Ladies and gentlemen, this is victim blaming on an heretofore unseen level. Yeah. Uh, what is his name? Glenn Casada? Fuck you. Fuck Glenn Casada of the Tennessee State House Republican Caucus. Yes, fuck him hard with a cactus. At least with her. Maybe if maybe these people should be looking to police their own people. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And maybe you can focus on not being such a fucking asshole, Glenn. <laughs> yeah, we're all in this together. That's the the we, we are all in this together. That you know, it shouldn't be just like, oh, this one group should just police themselves and leave us alone, and while we oppress them. No. Mm-hmm. Well, um, we continue to. Well, we should be free to make you know thinly veiled racist remarks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what? I can, I can, I can maybe buy that. Sheila Butt is just an idiot and honestly didn't think through what she was doing. I can actually, I can buy that. Yeah. But this guy, fuck <laughs> this guy. Yeah. Fuck him hard. Like I said, cactus, herpes. Give it to him. Up the ass. Hmm. <laughs> Sideways. Yes, please. With a, with, with a rabid raccoon. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, so so we got got a, one more news story we can do. Uh, we'll be running a little over time, but that's okay. Um, last one I've got here. Duck Dynasty television star Phil Robertson told the Conservative Political Action Conference, CPAC, on Friday that 100... 10 million Americans were infected with sexually transmitted diseases, and that it was the revenge of the hippies. Um, I don't have any. I don't have any. Do you? I mean, I know um, it's a personal question, but... <laughs> not to the best of my knowledge. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, neither of us do. After accepting the Andrew Breitbart Defender of the First Amendment Award, Robertson stepped up to the CPAC podium and pulled out a Bible that appeared to be held together with duct tape. Because, of course, it does. Yes. Uh... In case one of you gets to be president of the United States, make sure you carry your Bible and your woman. The reality star adv- advised, "I'm just saying, safety, safety. <laughs> carry your now, woman." Now, suddenly, I just have this image at the inauguration ceremony. There's the president, got his Bible in one hand and his wife just thrown over his shoulder on the other, going, "Uh, I don't know where to put my hands now." Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not putting them down. I need safety. <laughs> Yes. Leave the blood's rushing to my head. Quiet, dear. I'm getting inaugurated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> According to Robertson, the United States was almost at a place where both religion and morality had been lost. And to make his <laughs> point, he asserted that the CDC said that 110 million people in the United States were suffering from STDs or infections. I don't want you to die early, he exclaimed. If you're disease-free and she's disease-free, you're married, you keep your sex right there, you won't get sick from a sexually transmitted disease. Come on! There's a penalty to be paid from what the beatniks and it morphed into the hippies. I guess what the beatniks did. And it morphed into the hippies, the duck commander continued. What do you call the 110 million people who have sexually transmitted illnesses? It's the revenge of the hippies. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll have come back to haunt us in a bad way. Yeah, I'm really, you know, judging by how you look, you look like you probably would have been born and and lived a good portion through the 60s and 70s, I'm pretty sure. You know, you 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 can't. You, you're older than the both of us here. Okay, so, so I'm willing to bet that you lived through like Woodstock. You had your moments where you went out and you put your dick in every willing vagina out there. I'm willing to bet. I'm willing to bet you did that. But no, now all of a sudden, now that you're older and you don't do that anymore, you don't want the younger generations to do it. You're one of those people. It's the baby boomers. Fuck the baby boomers. It's like. If the baby boomers, a good chunk of the baby boomers are just like, we're getting old. We're not supposed to be old. We were the hope of America's youth. That's all it is. They're having a massive midlife crisis, and they want to ruin shit for the rest of us. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How many seconds does it take to get genital herpes, he asked the CPAC audience. Who the fuck is this guy, the Riddler? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> How many 
second. How, what do you call 110 million people who have sexually transmitted diseases? Scotch tape. What? No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, he said 30 seconds. I'm like, whoa, that's pretty quick. You want a godly, biblical, medically safe option? One woman, one man, one woman married for life. Or you could just take precautions in having sex. And you know what? We have future generations coming up. They're going to be having sex. Tell them about it. Tell them about condoms and birth control when they get ready to be sexually active. Because without that information, they're not going to know. The odds are a lot of them are not going to think to go and look it up because you've got to drill it into their heads that if they have any kind of thought outside of your precious little box, then they're going to get in trouble, that it's not good. So, of course, they're not going to think, okay, maybe I should look up everything I should about having sex and learn about, you know, not transmitting STDs and not getting somebody pregnant. They're just going to go out there, go bareback all over the goddamn place, and there you go. You're going to have a generation, another generation of people that were just born because th their parents were too ignorant, and that ignorance was brought upon about that baby's grandparents. Oh, I think I tried to channel George Carlin there. How did I do? <laughs> uh, not well. <laughs> nah, I didn't think so. Oh. Not well, not near enough profanity and u liberal use of wordplay. Um, very, very, very true. Uh, can, I, can I get the scores from the judges? Please? Yes, the uh, judges, uh, <laughs> seven, three, seven, six, nine, eight, and a two and a half from the Romanian judge. <laughs> I'm sorry you don't move on to the finals. <laughs> oh, that's fine. That's fine. But yeah, I, either way, fuck this guy. Fuck, yeah, fuck him. It's, fuck it's the fine. victim I, blaming again, asshole. Again, I ask the question, like I often do when I, as my main focus is reviewing television, why the fuck do we give reality television stars one, any sort of format? Why is it that the second you got a camera on you, Everybody starts thinking that your opinion matters, and I mean on the national forum. I mean, yeah, any we're we're a couple of assholes on camera. We know this, yeah, you know. Yeah. And look at look at this. This is more or less, you know, a platform in there and everything else. But that's oh, yeah. on a on a non professional level. I'm just saying, the second it gets to be like national television and whatnot, you know, it's like, why the hell should I even care what the political view, what your political views are? You have you are not an expert. You are some douche who signed a TV contract. Yeah, I mean, I don't uh, care what this guy. I don't care how highly rated the show is. I don't give a shit about the Duck Dynasty guys' politics. I don't give a shit about the politics of the guys on Pawn Stars. I really even don't even give a shit about the the politics of any given actor on there. I mean, this ties back. I I, I don't watch the Oscars anymore because, frankly, I. I've got better things to do with my time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, with uh, some of the things, I saw stuff on the news about Patricia Arquette and all that, and I'm like, why are you giving her any more attention? You know, it's like, it always just seems like, it's just like, why do you even care? They're, your, they're a movie star. They make entertainment. They may feel that because they have a public profile, they should be, they, they have an obligation to say something about something. But in all honesty, who really gives a shit? Yeah. You, wa you want to be... You want to be an awesome actor outside of outside of your profession, you know, saying things. You can say the right thing. You can say the wrong thing. It doesn't matter. It's your actions that count. Mm -hmm. So if you are saying – like like let's say you're saying, yes, I want equality for all people. I want the pay grades. I want, I want everybody to have equal pay. It doesn't matter your, your race or your gender or your sexuality or whatever, you know, and you push for things. You know, you, you try and lobby for – different things in the government to be pushed towards that direction. That's going to speak highly of you, and that's going to get you more respect outside of your fucking job. Now, if you're on the complete opposite end, then you're going to say, okay, I don't care how good of an actor you are, you're a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Uh, Woody Allen is immediately coming to mind, even though it's not on a political thing. But Yeah. You know, yeah. It's one of those things. I, I have an, un an unpopular stance on things like this is right. Woody Allen a piece of shit and a, dire and, a, and a sick human being oh fuck yeah is he a brilliant film director sadly yes <laughs> yeah a lot of people say that about I, Roman I, Polanski I the same thing. yeah Polanski the same thing one of my favorite movies is The Ninth Gate I'm mm -hmm. sorry if that if you think that makes me a bad person because I actually enjoy one of Roman Polanski's films and I'm able to divorce that from what he's done and why he can't legally come back into the United States, right. then I apologize for that. But, you know, I'm, it's not going to stop me from enjoying the material. It's it, I, I got into this discussion. When is the point 
where's the point where what someone does taints their entire body of work? Yeah, I mean, and, and hell, even more and largely, I think it's a personal thing. Yeah, you know, you can't just immediately say, well, you can't like this person's work anymore because he did this. Right. I mean, I like to make the point, you know what, guess what? I still love the Lethal Weapon movies. Is Mel Gibson a paranoid, anti-Semitic bastard? Yes. Yes, he is. Do I condemn him for that? Yes. Do I still enjoy watching his movies? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. That's yeah. not wow. double think. That's not a contradiction. It is entirely possible to enjoy a work regardless of whether or not the person putting out that work is a despicable human being. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. Uh, I mean, hey, that, color that, your uh, perceptions of certain elements of that work from here on out. Oh, yeah. I'm spe Getting back to the Mel Gibson thing, there's actually a scene in uh, Lethal Weapon 1 where they're theorizing about what happened with the murder that occurred at the beginning of the movie, mm -hmm. and it's implied that the victim, who was female, was having lesbian sex with another person, and there's this apparent little thing. Now, keep in mind, for those of you who don't, who were too young to remember this, this was Reagan era 80s. This was 1983. Mm -hmm. This was early Reagan era. Things were very conservative back then, and yeah, you could really. get away with a lot, and you could get away with saying a lot of things that wouldn't fly today. Um, so he basically says, so, you know, all this time we assumed she was in bed with a man. So let's assume she was in bed with Dixie. Yeah, disgusting, but let's assume that. You know that that kind of thing. It's just like okay. One, how often do you hear that? A guy saying that lesbian sex is disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in this day and age. Mm. You know, and I get the feeling that if Omega was here, she would clobber me for that comment. Probably. And, I <laughs> and that's then, and, and to which I say again, I apologize for that. That was not. I just realized how I said that. That that was just poorly phrased. Yeah. But um, so I apologize. I'm sure she's going to listen to this later. I apologize to any and all lesbian couples out there for that comment i i sincerely do um yeah i'm talking off the cuff here so a lot of things come out very badly when i try to do that yeah. uh you're, but, you're in good company here <laughs> yeah uh anyway um but yeah it's just one of those things where you know you see that scene now and you're like oh, i never noticed that's kind of pissy <laughs> yeah like, is that actually in the script, or is that Mel Gibson? Is that Mel Gibson ad-libbing? Yes. <laughs> so. uh, I, I have no idea. But uh, right now, we are we are actually well over time now. Wow. I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's me. okay. I, I tend to ramble. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, that, that you know that was the word I was looking for earlier. Ramble. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when that happens, but uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take our rambling asses and uh, get out of here for this week. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, throw myself on the mercy of Glad, and uh... <laughs> well, before you throw yourself at the mercy of Glad, uh, where can we find you if we wanted to find you on social medias and and anywhere else on the net? Yeah, uh, if you'd like, I'm uh, of course my videos are being hosted on uh, RT Gomer dot uh, product RT Gomer dot com. Um, my main YouTube website, which has nearly all my videos, I'm still fighting with YouTube over their stupid content on eSystem. YouTube dot com slash dubiouscon. That's D U B I O U S K H A N. Uh, you can also reach me on. I'm also on Twitter at shallow fifteen. That's S H A L L O W one five. All right, and if you want to find me on the social medias and everywhere else, uh, you can find me on the Twitters and the Tumblers at gomer 21 X. You can also find my stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. Uh, that includes all my other podcasts, my videos, mostly gameplay videos right now. I'm still work trying to get back into the swing of doing video reviews again. It's not working out too well, unfortunately. Um... And let's see, what else is there? What else is there? Of course, these shows, all, all my podcasts, you can also find them on iTunes. So if you go and you subscribe, you like the shows enough, you know, hey, you know, you can get them as they go up. Um, also, I do have a Facebook fan page, uh, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. Just go look that up, and there you go. Bam. And, and of course, both sides of them do have their own Facebook fan pages, and both of them also have their own Tumblrs. Go check them out, all of that really good stuff. Um, and... If you have anything you want to send into the show, questions, comments, or whatever, uh, the Thespian Talk Tumblr does have an ask box. Uh, it's thespiantalk.tumblr.com. Uh, just hit the ask box, and you can send in pretty much anything. We'll, we'll, we'll read it for the most part. <laughs> I, I think it would be very, very, very slim chance that it wouldn't be read. but it, it just Unless it's, you know, Mel Gibson talking about how much he hates lesbian 
couples. But that's something else entirely. <laughs> no, if he does that, we'll we'll bring it on and make fun of it. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but yes. Yeah, so again, thank you guys for listening. Thank you for listening to the both of us ramble on for a while. <laughs> Oh, and uh, until next time, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Aaron Mills, a.k.a. Dubious Khan, signing off. See ya. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is Kick Shock by Kevin McLeod. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to Patreon.com slash gomer 21 X. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly Patreon-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who can be commissioned by going to Patreon.com slash Becky Hop. Check us out on iTunes or visit RTGomer.com for more great shows.